All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple examples now uh, using mortgages. So in example one, it says, Eric is buying a house that is selling for $55,000. It's obviously not in Southern California. The minimum down payment is 25%. The interest rate on a 30-year loan is 8%. So let's go ahead and calculate the down payment on this mortgage. So to do that, we're just going to take 0.25 and multiply by the 55,000 price of the house. Okay, so 0.25 times 55,000, and it gives us thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and this is the down payment now to find the amount of the mortgage we're gonna take the cost of the house fifty five thousand we're gonna subtract the down payment okay so we're gonna go fifty five thousand minus thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty and so our mortgage amount is going to be $41,250. So this is how much is being financed and what you're taking the loan for. This is what you have to pay for the down payment uh, to be able to get your mortgage. Now next it says calculate the monthly mortgage payment. So to do that, we're going to use this information. We have a 30-year loan at 8%. Okay, so we come down here and we look at a 30-year loan at 8%, and where those cross, we have the number of 7.34. So what that means is for every $1,000 of mortgage, we pay $7.34 per month. Okay, well how many thousands of our mortgage do we have? Well, 41,250 divided by 1,000, that's going to give us how many thousands we have. And then this is going to be times $7.34 per thousand. Okay, so this is going to give us what we need. So we want to take that and divide it by a thousand. Okay, which is 41.25. And then times 7.34. And it's $302.78. And this is going to be the monthly mortgage payment uh, for 30 years. So 360 payments of $302.78 will pay back a mortgage amount of $41,250. Now in example two, the Iman's are buying a house that sells for $52,000. The bank is requiring a minimum down payment of 15%. To obtain a 30-year mortgage at 9.5%, they must pay three points at the time of closing. So go ahead and find your down payment and the mortgage on the property. And when you have that, go ahead and come back and check your work. And then we'll talk about finding the points. All right, well, welcome back. So you should have come up with a required down payment of $7,800. And with the 15% down payment, uh, the mortgage on the property is going to be $44,200. Next, we want to find the cost of three points on the mortgage, determined in Part B. So what we want to do for three points, we're actually going to take 3%, which is 0 0.03, of the mortgage amount, which is $44,200. Okay, so we'll calculate that. 0 0.03 times 44,200, and it turns out to be $1,326. All right, so that cost would be uh, needed to be paid in escrow before you could even get your mortgage. Next, we want to deal with an example of trying to be able to qualify for a mortgage. 
So Marlon's gross monthly income is $2,500. He has 12 remaining payments of $95 on furniture and appliances. The taxes and insurance on the house are $105 per month. So what is the buyer's adjusted monthly income? Well, his gross income is $2,500. Gross just means total. And we're going to subtract now his payments. So he has $95 a month that he's paying for furniture and appliances. And so his adjusted monthly income is $2,405. So there's his adjusted monthly income. And the question is, what is the maximum monthly payment the buyer will qualify for? So what we want to do here is we're going to take 28% or 0.28 and multiply it by the adjusted monthly income. Now why 28%? Well, that's just an arbitrary number that's chosen by uh, lending institutions. So let's try this. 0.28 times 2405 we get $673.40. Now Marlon would like to get a 30-year $52,200 mortgage. Does he qualify for this mortgage with a 9% interest rate? Well, we need to figure out how much his monthly payment would be for this mortgage. So we have 30 years at 9%. So here's 30 years. Here's 9%, and we get $8.05 per $1,000 of mortgage. So again, we need to take our $52,200 mortgage, divide that into thousands, and then multiply by our 8.05. So 52,200 divided by 1,000, okay, and then times 8.05 and that is $420 and 21 cents and that's the monthly payment. Now at this point it looks like he qualifies because the monthly payment is 420.21 and he can qualify for 673.40 but there's one other thing we have to remember, that the taxes and the insurance on the house are $105 per month. And so that amount actually needs to get added to his monthly payment for the purposes of seeing whether he qualifies. So go ahead and add the 105. and that's going to be $525.21. And because his total maximum monthly payment that he qualifies for is higher than this, he does qualify. Now, what happens is if somebody doesn't make enough money and they don't qualify on their own, there's something that we call a cosigner. And what a cosigner is, it's somebody who's willing to also sign for the mortgage. And what happens then is your cosigner's gross income also gets added to yours. And so this 28% of this total uh, includes your cosigner's uh, income as well, meaning you're able to qualify for a much larger uh, mortgage. Now, some benefits of that are you can actually get into the house. And as long as you know that you can pay for it, that's going to be fine. If you can't pay for it, that cosigner is still liable for the loan and any penalties associated with breaking uh, your mortgage or any of that. So uh, cosigners are usually people that, you, that trust you, um, most often your parents. Now in this next example, we want to talk about uh, how much we actually pay for the house, how much is interest, how much goes to principal, and, and how much is left after your first payment. So Andrea obtains a 30-year $63,750 conventional mortgage at 8.5% on a house selling for $75,000. 
Her monthly payment, including principal and interest, is $490.24. So calculate the total amount Andrea will pay for the house. Well, if we look at this, her monthly payment is $490.24, and one year's worth of payment is going to be times 12. And then we know that she's doing this for 30 years. Now, to add to this, we also have to calculate the down payment. So here, it's not uh, explicitly stated because the house sold for $75,000, and yet there was a mortgage of $63,750. So if we want to find the down payment, we're actually going to need to subtract these two. Okay, so there had been a down payment of $11,250, which we're going to add on to the price of the house. Okay, so we have our monthly payments for 30 years and the down payment. So let's go ahead and add these up. So 490.24 times 12 times 30 years plus 11,250 gives us a total amount of $187,736.40. Now how much interest does she pay? Well interest is going to be everything she pays over the selling price for the house. So we're going to take that total price and subtract the selling price of the house, the 75000 Now notice the down payment is included in this and the down payment is also included in this so uh, that's one way we can do this here. So we have our price, we're going to subtract the selling price and so the total amount of interest is $112,736.40. Now next it says how much of the first payment is applied towards principal? Now remember for this we're going to do I equals PRT. Now in the first month you're going to owe the entire mortgage amount which is $63,750. The rate is your 8.5% so times 0 0.085 and this is going to be applied for one month so this is going to be 1 divided by 12 and this is going to give this the amount of interest for one month on our mortgage at 8.5 percent so we have 63750 times 0 0.085 times 1 divided by 12. And so the interest is $451.56. Okay. Well, that doesn't answer the question because we want how much of the first payment is applied towards principal. Well, remember her payment amounts, including principal and interest, are 490.24. So if we subtract the interest from that, we're going to be left with how much is applied towards principal. So we're going to do 4, 490.24 minus 451.56. And so the amount applied to principal is going to be $38 and 68 cents. Now using this amount we can find the new principal balance after their first payment. So the original mortgage had been 63,750 and you can see that's what we had here and we're actually going to pay off only $38.68 of principal in that first month. 
So if we have 6, 3, 7, 5, 0, minus 3, 8.68, this is how much we have left to pay. $63,711.32 remaining uh, spread out over 359 payments. So if we wanted to find a month two, we would just take this new principal amount, plug it in here, it would spit out the interest, we could subtract the interest from our payment, and we could figure out how much goes to principal, subtract that from the balance, and then we'd get our new balance after month two. And this process continues on and on and on and on, for all 360 payments. Now we're going to be looking at how to do this using an Excel spreadsheet um, and something that's called an amortization table. And it's going to help us kind of determine all of these things about our mortgage loans and also some ways that we can pay off the loans a little bit quicker and also save interest. But for now, this is how we're going to be working with our mortgages. All right, this next example, example five, is going to be putting it all together. Okay, so I want you to try example five. It's going to test whether you understand all the different parts of the mortgages uh, from finding the down payments and the points and whether you qualify for a loan and all that good stuff. So go ahead and try to put it all together. And we're actually going to check this together in class. So please bring this uh, with you when you come.